Bruce Willis is back in Deadlock. Welcome to the Film Threat Podcast. I am Chris Gore. It is my mission in life to tell you about indie films that you have to check out. Um, I'm excited today to have on the director of Deadlock, starring Bruce Willis, in a very interesting role, which I can't wait to talk about. And Jared Cohn is here today to talk to us about the film. Um, uh, real quick, uh, yeah, you'll probably notice I did get a haircut. Yes, I have had my, my lockdown locks, so to speak, for a while. Finally got them cut. So there you go. As far as I'm concerned, uh, we're back to normal, or at least my hair is. Uh, it's also the holiday season. I, I want to remind you, hey, uh, support us. Get something at the Film Threat shop. You can get this t-shirt that I'm wearing. We've got stickers, bags, hats, all kinds of cool designs. Uh, you know, I wear them on the Film Threat podcast all the time. So check that out. It's the holiday season. So get one for yourself and a friend. Right now, let's talk to Jared. He is here to discuss his movie, Deadlock. Jared, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Great to <laughs> see you. Great to see you. Yes. Support Film Threat. Buy the shirt. I'm gonna. I need to buy the shirt. I'm gonna buy the shirt. Buy a shirt. There's a bunch of different ones. Jared, um, this is not your first time on the podcast, and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us because you're in the middle of making a movie right now. I don't know anything about this new film, but I'm uh, sure. We'll wrap. Yeah, we just wrapped uh, a couple a couple days ago. Uh, but man, we had yeah, we had Anderson Silva, Rampage Jackson. Uh, AJ McKee, the, the world champ, uh, Khalil, yeah, Khalil Roundtree, uh, Richard Grieco, Czech Congo, <laughs> Hegan Machado, like, like it was like the, the most badass fighters. If you're not into MMA, then none of those names probably people are probably going to be like, what the fuck? Is, I've never heard of those people. Um, but they are MMA superstars uh All right, well let's talk about that movie when it's when it's coming out for yeah, sure we'll, we'll, we'll talk about deadlock for sure and on another podcast but this one deadlock is uh first of all it's an amazing indie action movie that i can't believe um the scale of it right it takes place at this giant dam where uh a madman played by Bruce Willis on a mission. Well, he's on a mission. We we have some understanding. It's sort of the, the flip of his role in Die Hard, right? Like he kind of plays Hans Gruber in this, in a sense. I mean, you could put it that way, yeah. but it felt a little, at least the circumstances felt a little bit similar, right? Um, tell me first how you got Bruce Willis to be in this and then what it was like to work with Bruce Willis. Well, I wish I could take credit for, uh, you know, getting Bruce Willis in the movie, but I got to give that entirely up to the producer, Corey Large, um, who's done uh, numerous, my hat is not straight, sorry, uh, who's done numerous Bruce Willis movies and has a good relationship with him. So he was cool enough to get him working with him, uh, working with Bruce is, you know, and what can I say? The guy, the guy's a legend. Um, and, you know, I wish I could say I sat down with him and, you know, had great talks about his movies, but, you know, I didn't want to bother, you know, you know, I knew he was, he just came in for something else and, and, and you know, he, he was, we only had him for a very brief period of time. So unfortunately it was, you know, he showed up to set, we you know, we only had a short period of time with him and we had a lot of, a lot of scenes to do. So we got right into it and that was cool with it. You know, that's exactly what, you know, he was cool with, uh, and, you know, we kept him, uh, and he did a great job, you know, I let him, let him create, play creatively and just an honor to be uh, able to direct him. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I see at least what I know of him is he seems like a total pro, right? Like total pro. Like he just, you know, he's there, he's there, you know, he's, you know, he's been doing it for such a long, you know, longer than, you know, I, I've been alive probably. I, I don't know. You know, uh, um, so I'm not. You know, I'm not. He doesn't want. He doesn't want anyone contact. That Jai Jai Hard was great. I'm sure the guys here. He I'm sure he hears that every day of his life. So you know, the last. I'm not going to bother him. I, <laughs> well, respect his, his, his 
day, you know. Well, with the holidays coming up, I mean, Die Hard is, I've always considered it a Christmas movie, or it's at least a movie that, like, you can uh, have the excuse around the holidays. That, like, it's a Christmas movie. Come on, everybody loves Die Hard. I mean, it's yeah, yeah. it's such a great, like, underdog story. And and seeing, you know, you know lean, seeing him lean into not only his acting chops, but also, I mean, there are parts of it that are very funny, you know? So uh, it, it's a classic. With Deadlock, there is a lot. I mean, the, the action is at a whole other level. And um, I, I made a film once with guns, right? And it's taken very seriously on the set. I, I So I'm wondering, like, how did you handle the gunplay on this? I mean, um, I, I don't want to go over recent events with Alec Baldwin, but obviously... Um, yeah you know, it's a very serious issue, but there's a lot of gunplay on the set. So how, how do you approach that as a, as a director? Um, you know, for me, uh, you know, very, very, tra let me just, um, let me just comment on, uh, you know, the Alec Baldwin tragedy. I mean, that's just awful. I mean, the fact that the lead actors shot and killed the, the DP, I mean, that's just un, fathomable but it's i mean it happened so you gotta be uh anytime you're making an action movie you know deadlock we had a ton of ton of action ton of ton of guns um but we, you know we had a really good armorer and ad so you go through the process you know and, 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 and you know it takes time but you gotta do it you know it's gun safety meetings you gather the, you know, you gather everyone that's that that's around. It's gonna be on the set, and you you hold the, you know, the armors like this is this is this gun, this is that gun. You know, they and not not not, but not actually no, yeah, exactly. This is this gun. They disassemble it. Look, it's made, this part's made of plastic, can't fire. They pass the gun around, and, and, and it's the whole thing, and 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 you know. Because you don't want any, you don't want any accidents to happen. Um, uh, you know, we, you know, we use some effects. Uh, uh, most of the guns were airsoft, but you know, we also had these Zerks, which are actually paintball, paintball guns uh, that shoot sparks and, but you don't, you know, you sh and dust hits. So, but we weren't using any lot. We certainly didn't use any. Uh, uh, no, we didn't use any blanks. We, we we did the effects in post, so we were safe. But safety first. Don't 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 let that happen on your set. Well, I think a lot of people don't know is that you can enhance and or add like a lot of stuff digitally because the flash is like what a frame. It's a frame. It's, it's a, a frame. frame. That's it. I mean, you see it with your eye, but it's just a frame, and um, that's what we did on on the film that I made with our gunplay, it was a movie called my big fatter dependent movie. And we just did it. We just did it all digital, including the blood effects. Right. Yeah. Which, which have gotten better because I can't really, I'm not sure that the film I made stands the test of time, but, um, but in your film, wow, it is just like intense, you know, uh, what, tell me also about this location. This location is practically a character in the movie, this dam that is just, I mean, it's it really add added to the production value and the scale of the film. So how how did that all come together? Oh man, it was uh, originally it was supposed to take place at a nuclear power plant, but they found this dope dam, and it was a real dam. And what it's an engineering marvel. I mean, the way dams work with turbines, and it, it's a fun, active dam. It's like legitimately powering towns, but they were opening gates for us. I mean, these people were so cool. Uh, you know, you'd have to call ahead to the county and say, hey, we're going to close a gate for, or open a gate for five minutes. And they were doing all that stuff uh, for our film. Um, so the damn people uh, that work there uh, are awesome. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with, <laughs> I was, we were all like, this is so cool. Like just seeing these massive turbines spin and 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 it's like 40 something like forty thousand gallons a second like passed through like that's how like in and like watching a being on top of a dam when a 
when a gate opens is like that's cool like you don't think it's cool because uh, it's like whatever but you, you see it and you're like holy shit this is like these guys are actually like creating power from water uh, well, it, it, it really does add to the whole like scale and environment in the film. I, I, I would, wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you about Patrick Muldoon. I mean, he's so great as the lead in this. Um, and I, I, I don't know. He just, he just seems like he, uh, 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 he'd be fun to work with too. Yeah, man. He has a vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Pat, Pat, Patrick, I actually had the, uh, opportunity to work with Patrick, uh, Few, you know, years ago on a werewolf movie, uh, and he was cool and funny. We got along, and when I found out he was going to be in, in the lead in this, it was like uh, no time passed, and and he took it. You know, he 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 got ripped for the role, and he was he, he was cool. I, I really like Patrick. He he's got a great vibe. The movie is. Uh... I don't know. It's just it's just a pleasant surprise. And also, you all you always really with your films impress me at like what you're able to do on an indie level, right? Like, and this movie is coming out theatrically. I want to say December third. So yeah, well, I wish I got to find out where the theaters are. Um, uh, or the drive-in. I've been going to the drive-in, dude. The drive-ins are the best. I mean. I mean, there's like three that that are close enough where I can I can drive to them. So, yeah, a, a lot a lot of these movies are opening at the drive-in now, which is which is really refreshing. So I, I gotta find out. I gotta someone's gotta tell me, or I'll I'll do some interneting to, to search to search. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, 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 December third, December third. Um, Jared, I know you gotta go. Actually, I'm being, I'm giving, getting a signal that you got to go. I uh, want to say thanks for joining me on the Film Threat Podcast. It won't be the last time for sure. And I hope to see you at uh, Award This. I want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's submit Deadlock. Uh, okay. Good. It's, well, I mean, all, all you really need is just, you know, be available to the public and also just, um, you know, be reviewed on Film Threat. So I think you're good. I think you're solid on that. I want to throw. I want to throw my hat in the, <laughs> in the awards this ring, ring for consideration. Cool, uh, Jared. Thanks again. Um, toasting you for this holiday season and reminding everybody: Hey, go get yourself get yourself something from the Film Threat Shop and support us in what we do. Uh, and thanks again for being on the Film Threat Podcast. It's a pleasure. Support Film Threat. My pleasure. My pleasure. Take care, Jared. Later. Later. <laughs>